big red bean bag in here, like. <laughs>
Everybody, Good. how are you tonight? Good. Woo. Good. How's it going? Thank you for coming. Uh, even like this is crazy, right? We thought that, I thought it was springtime, and uh, here we are with rain and cold again. So my name is Dave Gonzalez. I run the uh, internet marketing party in the David Gonzalez Agency. Um, and uh, before I introduce our guest speaker tonight, I want to take a moment and acknowledge. Uh, the, uh, a couple of our sponsors, and uh, one of them is the Capital Factory, who uh, provides us with this gorgeous uh, event venue. Um, and uh, the other is uh, the Internet Marketing Party with Don Lissandro. So it's kind of weird to acknowledge the sponsor that I am, but we brought the beer out. And, and, uh, and, and, and I also want to acknowledge Anna Cummins, our event coordinator, that helps put all this together gets our speakers and make sure that the uh, the meetup page is all up and done and just makes you know just kind of makes it so that I just she gets to show up here and seem like 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 I did anything but all I did all I did was just just go back there and say say a few words to our speaker who I'm about to tell you some things about but uh, what I will say uh, in the context of the internet marketing party as a sponsor is, uh, raise your hand if you've ever been to one all right so about a third of the room those of you that haven't been, I want to say a few things about it that will actually weave into to our, our guest speaker today. Um, it's, uh, we've been doing it every single month for 10 years without a miss. And what Internet Marketing Party is, is basically a community of digital marketing experts that it's, uh, where we bring a speaker in that's genu genuinely generated uh, at least a million or a couple million dollars online. You're probably on some of their email lists as subscribers because they're some of them are like gurus, you know, the, the online space, big names. Uh, and we, we, instead of having them, you know, speak at a conference or something like that, we put them in a bar and we get them a little buzz <laughs> and they come and they, uh, you know, it's kind of like a 20 minute TED talk. It's always a lot of fun. And the cool part about that, that is, is the afternoon of the party, I, I curate eight to 10 experts to kind of help them around a big challenge in their business. So they come to the party with a lot, big heart and a lot of reciprocity, wanting to give back. And a lot of times the people in the audience are also online millionaires. So I highly recommend you show up. Um, and I've started to notice a correlation, which I'll weave in. Uh, and by the way, if you've never been to an internet marketing party, see Anna in the back before you leave today. And for if, you're, if it's your first time, we'll let you in for free. It's, uh, it's uh, 30, 39 bucks a month to be a member, but if it's your first time, uh, and we'll know, um, just let <laughs> Anna know, and, and we'll, we'll let you in. Deal? Deal. All right, so um, without further ado, I want to move over to our topic today um, for our guest speaker. Um, his name is Greg Jeffries, and Greg, uh, I've known for about four, five, six years. I don't know, it, it blurs because we've done something as long as uh, 10 years every month, like 
you know, the, the time starts to get weird. Um, but I, I first heard of Greg from one of my business partners at Internet Marketing Party. He's like, dude, there's this dude that came up and said, any way he can help, anything he can do, he's all in. He just wants to support. And I was like, man, that's really cool, you know? And so he's, we, we took him up on the offer and asked him if he would volunteer. And he'd come over and show up early and help us set up the, the banners and sign people in at the front desk and all this stuff. And we were talking about his evolution from getting started when he had a full-time, you know, clock-in W-2 job until more recently where in, uh, it, he started, like, researching and learning and coming to internet marketing parties and started like figuring out like well what do i i don't have a lot of extra money so i think what i'm going to do is is the stuff that is free and he puts that in air, air quotes stuff that doesn't require a lot of capital to do so he's like i'm going to maybe do some seo stuff and he started doing some seo and finding and like doing like uh, some of the stuff like how many of you have ever done like online surveys to make money it's like the modern day version of like stuffing envelopes, right? And it was like, whatever you could do to just figure it out, a lot of trial and error, trial and error. And the more he did, the more he started finding out like, man, this information online contradicts this information, contradicts. So he decided, you know what? I I'm feeling not as confident as I could. So in 2016, he started going to live events. And when he would go to live events, he would connect with other people that were involved in SEO. And he started realizing like, holy moly, the stuff that I thought was right is actually right. So his confidence level went up through the roof. And at the end of 2016, he decided to quit his job. And I might have the, the dates off here a little bit. Uh, and he decided to quit his job. And by, by, he was either by the end of 2016 or 2017 going all in with what he had more confidence with by interacting with all these people at live events and realizing like, oh my God, what I know is right. Now I can go and do it. By the end of 2017, he made his first six figures online. So, uh, you know, raise your hand if you'd like to make six figures in your first year of doing online marketing. And a lot of people with uh, regular W-2 jobs aren't making six figures. So that was really cool. And then, you know, he just doubled down. Actually, he's now doing some software development. And it's funny uh, because when I found out that Greg was doing well, there's a book that I read called Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. And that book has been a huge, huge impact in my life. It's made it to where um, I could I could bring on a business partner, take some big risks, and not feel like I was suffocating. Because you know, if you take big risks that aren't like he, Robert Kiyosaki likes to say, the difference between a uh, personal risk and a professional risk, like everything in life is risky. Like you could say, like unless any of you are airline pilots or or you know, licensed air, uh, you know, airplane pilots. If I put you behind the cockpit of an airplane, that's ex extraordinarily risky. Like it's got pretty much a hundred percent chance that you and whoever's in the plane are going to die. Now, but if you say, well, you know, so flying a plane is risky as compared to if you think of somebody who's done like twenty thousand hours of fighter jet in combat flight time, and they also been flying commercial uh, jetliners for years. Like, I think I would rather fly in a jet with them than get in a car on I-35 <laughs> at 2 a.m. <laughs> on a Saturday <laughs> night, right? So risk is relative. And so, um, you know, the, the, the reason that I say that is that this book, uh, when I read it, had such an impact on my life. And I had such a, like a, a, a you know, good, warm-hearted feeling around Greg when he shared with me at one of the internet marketing parties over a couple of cocktails the kind of numbers he was doing on a monthly basis. And I was like, dude, when we're not drinking, let's get on a phone call. And we got on a phone call and we like every like quarter, every four or five, six months, we get on the phone and I'm like, are you still doing the profit first stuff? And he goes, dude, thank you so much. Cause if not, I would not like, cause the thing about making money is it's not about making the money, it's about keeping the money because most of the time, if you're used to making 40, 50,000 a year, and then all of a sudden you make 80, 90, 100,000 a year, all the things you always said, oh, I wish I, I would ride Uber Lux. I would, uh, yeah. I, would say I would I would get the, the, the suite at the, at, the, at the highest, not the one, the one bedroom economy. I would fly 
uh, VI, you know, uh, first, first class, class and all these things. That, but then once you do that, it's hard to go back down. So keeping the money that you make is where it's really about. And so I talked with Greg about this, and and he we made a, a pact together that he would put a certain amount of all the money he made. He was like, oh, dude, but I want to pay my debt down. And I'm like, I don't give a shit about your debt. You save money because this amount, of, like, that debt, like, just trust me on this. And every once in a while, we'll check in. And he's just like, dude, thank you so much. So I, that's a message for you guys as well, uh, guys and gals. Uh, and so, you know, I just want to say that everybody in this room, uh, I, I heard a few people say, like, hey, we all came to you know, to come and support Greg. So if it tells you anything about the power of community, the power of being able to start from not being sure if you can actually make it happen. Our guest speaker tonight is somebody who I hope inspires you, gives you the courage, and gives you the fortitude to just stick with it, stick with it, and make it happen. So with that, Greg Jackie. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. Anybody hear, hear me in the back? I don't know. Hello, 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 hello. Take a moment and say, we love you, Greg, because this is the first time Greg's ever spoken in public. Yeah. 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 Greg, yeah. Yeah. Greg. Yeah. one, two, three. Good luck, Greg. Greg. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Greg. Stay speaking in the mic. Hello, hello. Say it again. Hello, hello, hello. Is that good? Better. A little bit. Yeah, sorry. Um. Yeah, thanks for that awesome introduction, Dave. Yeah, like you said, this is my first time speaking in public, basically. I've got a course that I'm used to kind of teaching on YouTube or behind a computer. Um, so yeah, I was going to do an intro, but he did an awesome job, so I'll just get right into it. So this is hopefully only going to last about 35 minutes or so, so there'll be plenty of time at the end for questions. So if you have any questions along the way, uh, just save them up, write them down, and at the end, I'll do my best to answer them as best I can um, and give them more you know, specific examples based on why you came here today. So the title of my presentation is called How to Build a Full-Time Passive Income Using SEO Without Quitting Your Day Job. So that's what I was able to do. Um, like Dave mentioned, um, basically been kind of dabbling in online marketing, affiliate marketing, and gravitated towards SEO. For uh, several years, I came out to Austin in 2009, so I've been here almost 10 years now. And it took me uh, a, you know, several years of just buying courses, failing, trial and error, a lot of money, a lot of time. And you know, the big turning point was eventually going to live events and meeting other SEOs, meeting other people doing the same stuff and not tr uh, you know, just putting all my faith and trust in just the courses I was going through because it's kind of hard to make a uh, connection to some of the people that you, that you meet online unless you've met them in person. And um, it's hard to tell if that information is correct because there's a lot of, I'm sure, pretty much any niche or discipline out there or skill there's all this misinformation on, online as far as like what to do, what not to do, what people say works, and uh, there's for everything that works, there's always some group of people that say it doesn't work. So um, yeah, so let's see. So just to get uh, just to cover what SEO is, if you're not familiar with it, it just stands for search engine optimization. It's just basically a fancy word to. Uh, it describes how to uh, optim optimizing content to rank in the search engines, uh, Google being uh, the biggest one. So each search engine is a little different, but most people care about you know optimizing their content to rank in Google. So that's just what it is simplified. 
So I'm not sure, uh, I'm sure everybody here does something different. Um, you may not all be interested in SEO for affiliate marketing. You may have like a local business or whatever, but if you've ever tried to learn anything about SEO, you uh, you probably heard some of these things that it's SEO is slow, hard, it's expensive, it's unpredictable, mysterious, you know, it's unscalable because, you know, it's so slow or whatever and uh, just do pay traffic instead or whatever. And then you've got the scary algorithms. So uh, for uh, up until a couple of years ago, I don't, I don't know how often Google updates anymore, but in the SEO space um, and some of the blogs and forums and stuff I was following, there were all these like updates back to back like every single year and stuff. And the people, the courses that were coming out and the people that I was following, those were always the scary thing. It's like, oh, you know, uh, Google just did this update and all of our sites got hit and now we lost all this traffic and stuff. But uh, as you'll see, uh, um, some of the information I'll share here, that r really the algorithms is just kind of, uh, I see it as Google's way and then um, I don't really know if these other search engines like Bing and stuff really do it, but the one that really uh, everybody cared about was Google. But um, the to me, the algorithms are a good thing, especially if you're doing SEO uh, right, uh, because it basically just is Google's way of sweeping the internet and removing all the garbage content or the uh, because you have to kind of put yourself in the shoes of Google. Their you know their main business is their search engine, and that's where they get all their uh, or that's where they b began getting their you know millions and millions of dollars and stuff. They uh, that's their product, and um, that's where everybody started advertising and stuff. So it's within their best interest to give you the best search results that it knows of and to deliver those in the shortest amount of time. So algorithms aren't really a thing that I worry about anymore, um, mostly because I just, I didn't really know how to stay on top of and stuff, but you know, if you do <coughs> SEO um, using some of the fundamentals that I'm gonna go into, then it's not really something that you have to worry about or be scared about. So I wanted to give you a little bit of history of the internet and kind of the structure of the internet. I know this stuff can kind of be a little boring, but I think it's important to debunk like the mysteriousness of algorithms and stuff. And you know, these bits and pieces of this um, SEO puzzle, I've just kind of pieced together over the, over the years. So just being in this space for a long time and going to a lot of live events, making a lot of friends over the years, you just get these little random pieces of information. And this is one that um, I, I came across a couple of years ago. So um, before my uh, last job, right before it, I, uh, I, I mean, pretty much since I've been in Austin, I uh, have a design background, so I just had like um, freelance and contract uh, temp jobs uh, back to back and stuff. And then eventually as I was getting uh, deeper and deeper into like th this affiliate marketing space and gravitating towards SEO, I, you know, there's not a lot of jobs that I could think of or that I could find out there that were really anything that I wanted to do, but because uh, I just wanted to like do affiliate marketing, make my own line, there weren't really any jobs for that unless you're working for another marketer. But I finally decided um, it'd be a good idea to maybe find a position that um, specialized in SEO, maybe client SEO, and that way, instead of going through all these courses, I could just find somebody that's already doing this, you know, for a client, and if they're doing somewhat of a good job and these clients are sticking around, then hopefully I could learn a few things and apply uh, that information to my affiliate marketing space because I just wanted to learn the truth. I just wanted to learn how this stuff actually worked rather than hoping and crossing my fingers and guessing going through all these courses I was buying. So I just made a list of um, all the SEO companies that I could find in Austin and reached out to each one of them. And I only got one response back and it was this guy, I think his name's Matt, um, from, I believe it's Austin SEO.biz, and he reached out to me and he was nice enough to uh, kind of take me under his wing and sh he kind of dropped this nugget that really just helped connect the pieces in a big way for me with uh, def 
kind of defining the structure of the internet, and it made a lot of sense to me when he explained it. So um, uh, he, on the left, you'll see this is the um, HTML, which is nerdy code stuff or whatever. But if you, and this is the backbone of all the pages of the internet. So if you right click and ever um, view the source of a page, this is kind of the basics of what you'll see. But if you notice the structure of it, you'll see it has a header, a title, a body, and it's very, very similar to the screenshot on the right, which I'm sure all of you are familiar with something like this. You've probably written an English paper, a term paper, whatever, and it has a very similar structure. And um, I think that's interesting because the, the guy, Tim Berners-Lee, who's responsible for creating HTML and organizing the content on the um, what became the internet, he's a professor. So I don't think there's, I don't think there's, uh, it's interesting that there's a correlation there and he's just kind of organized that information in a way that um, that was familiar to him because that's how you write papers, like MLA format and style similar to that. So I just wanted to share this because I can't think it kind of builds a foundation on w and, and on what I mentioned before about like the internet not being mysterious. So there's, yes, uh, you know, in the beginning of the internet, they, things like social media weren't around, but um, as things like Facebook and stuff came around and social media, sure, I'm sure there's some weight that Google and the other search engines give to social shares and things like that, but like if you, and a lot of, you know, I'm sure there's a specific course out there just for, you know, SEO, gaming SEO based on social media and stuff, but like if you just, concentrate on some of these core things that I'm going to mention in just a minute, then you're, you're going to be fine in the long run. And SEO is a long, a long uh, game strategy anyway. So, so this is uh, a site that everybody in the room is familiar with, Wikipedia. And I want to show this because I think it's the perfect textbook example of what proper on-page optimization looks like. It's not very entertaining to read, but it, you know, it looks, it's organized like an encyclopedia, and it's basically the structure of this page is exactly what the search engines want to see. Uh, it's got the title that's exactly what that page is about, all the, the blue uh, links there, they link to, if you click them, they link to a page that has a title that's exactly that same word. Um, everything on the page is about that. Every every piece of content on that page supports the the main topic, which is the title of the page. So um, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about uh, why that content ranks and stuff. But you may have wondered, like, why you know when you search a keyword or. A, uh, a famous person or whatever, that Wikipedia is always like number two or number three. Um, sure, it's been around for several years now. There's a lot of websites that point to it now, but in the beginning, uh, came out in t uh, 2001, you know, how did it begin to get traction? Because there weren't a lot of backlinks, I'm sure, pointing to it back then. And a big reason, I believe, is the way that the, con the on-page uh, content was structured. So uh, SEO simplified, to me, it just comes down to two things, which are content and backlinks. Uh, content is just the information on the page, and backlinks is simply votes from other websites. So um, websites like um, Wikipedia, these blue links, the hyperlinks, they're pointing to a website, basically validating that the site that it's linking to is about that particular topic. So, like I mentioned a minute ago, the cool thing about just staying in, in a space for a long period of time is eventually you kind of uncover uh, in more and more pieces of the puzzle and everything starts to make more and more sense. And in my last job, it was an e-com, um, only an e-com store, it's Austin, um, the ABC Vacuums, Austin Backus Company. Uh, they had an online store which doesn't exist anymore, but they they were um, had the foresight to 
started a website in the early 90s, and when I used to have uh, conversations with my boss pretty much every single day, and they would share all these stories about their, you know, the, the early days, the internet, and just how much money they were making from just a basic site. And, um, and he, he said they would go to these um, uh, the hotels, just kind of like an obscure room or basement of the hotel, and all these people that were just like them that had these websites, they would um, you know, go to these little digital marketing events to, and all the search engines would show up there. So um, Yahoo and AltaVista and Lycos and Excite and all these other website uh, search engines would show up there. And basically, all, all these uh, companies like uh, my bosses, they would show up there to, for these search engines to basically tell them how to game their search engines without telling them directly. And this, I thought this story was pretty interesting because everybody wants to know how, you know, how Google works and how their algorithms work specifically and stuff. And so he told this story about, um, you know, all the, all the search engine people, their representatives had come to this event and they had got up and talked and um, um, uh, shared their secrets and whatever. And everybody was, you know, talking amongst themselves and um, not really paying attention to the next guy coming up. And he just got up to the mic and told everybody that he was going to tell them how, exactly how their algorithm worked. And at that moment, every, you know, he said you could hear a pin drop in the room. And he went on to say these three bullet points. He said, the our secret to our algorithm is to be relevant, be popular, and don't be evil. And they're like, who the heck is this guy? Where is he from? And it turned out he was from this new company, this new search engine that nobody had heard of called Google. And what was the <laughs> what was what was really cool is that he was like I think that was either the last or one of the last events like that. And after after that, pretty much Google exploded, and they never had those events anymore. Um, so <laughs> uh, I think that's really cool because to me, these three bullet points, they just simplify search engine optimization, at least from what I knew of it when I heard the story. And so to be relevant, to me it just means make sure you, you, know, you have your content optimized for the um, target keyword that you're trying to rank for. So uh, you know, if you're wanting to rank for uh, something about dog training, then you know, don't put everything on the page about basket weaving or something, at, and then try to point all these backlinks to the page to uh, tell Google that it's about dog training because it's not, you know, so, and then be popular. I just see that as like the backlinks, social shares, links from other sites, vote, which I basically just see as votes. Um, so the more votes you have, the more popular you are. And then the third um, point, don't be evil. I just take that as, you know, we're, we're all trying to basically game the system and game the, the search engines in order to uh, rank the content that we want to uh, boost at the top of these search engines. But there is, you just don't want to do it in a sloppy, unnatural way. So like if you're pointing um, links from other sites or you're buying links or doing guest posts or whatever from other sites, then, you know, if you do, uh, it's okay to build like, 10,000 links in a day or whatever, but c continue that. Um, do that, uh, you know, for a couple of weeks or a couple of months or whatever. Don't just build 10,000 links and then never build another link. It looks really weird to Google uh, when it eventually comes around and uh, crawls your website. So I just wanted to throw in a screenshot just to prove that I know what I'm talking about. So. These are, I do affiliate SEO, I don't do client stuff, so uh, these are just some screenshots of one of my affiliate accounts. On the right, there's a, a picture of me with a contest I won for a company called ClickFunnels, so again, that's what I do. Um, but SEO can also be fun. This is a project I did earlier this year just for, just to see if I could do it and what it would take. And so I wanted to rank myself for Sexiest Man in Austin for, for an image something I'd never done, and uh, as a byproduct of that, a lot of my websites rank too, so I'm <laughs> like, 
seven out of the ten positions plus a lot of the images. So, you know, it doesn't have to be, I mean, ultimately you won't probably want to make money, but there's other things you, <laughs> 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 you can rank as well. So, I mean, and optimize, so you can optimize videos, you can optimize images, and, you know, the, the application for this with making money is if maybe if you have an e-com store or, um, I don't know, a Pinterest account or something, um, something uh, you're selling something that's very visual. Um, I'm sure most of you in the room have clicked on images that you're maybe looking for a product to buy or whatever. So it's probably something that I, I don't ever see any other SAS really talk about this. And it's not very hard to, to do this because everybody is always concentrating on how to rank their websites and stuff. So, you know, there's a lot of applications. I just did this for fun. But again, if you're in e com or you have some sort of very visual, um, physical product maybe that you're selling like bathing suits or whatever, then um, you know you can use it to make money as well. So the one thing that changed everything for me in regards to SEO, um, like I mentioned in the beginning, the there's a lot of misinformation out there and I guess the only way you figure out what's the truth and what's not or at least what works for you is just by uh, you know, asking a lot of questions. If you ask the right ones, you'll get the answer you want. But a lot of my um, time was trying to figure out the questions to ask. And then eventually, sometimes you just have to test and experiment and uh, do a little trial and error because the one thing that I'm about to show you, no one was really talking about it. Uh, there weren't any courses about it very much, or at least ones that I came across. And um, it, it seems kind of counterintuitive, but it's the only thing that really got me traction and, and kind of moved the needle for me. So, which is concentrating on longer tail keywords, which just means longer search phrases. Um, all the courses that I was going through at the time, uh, you know, they weren't saying try to rank for like make money and stuff, but it, w it was mostly um, talk uh, will tell you to rank for like product name, uh, followed by the word review, which is, it still works, that's fine, but a lot of newbies are going after those keywords. And again, it still works, you can still make money, that's fine, but there's a lot of other keywords that people are typing in around these um, products and niches. And I guess the problem up until a couple years ago was that it was uh, kind of challenging to find what these were because there weren't any tools that I knew of that could help you find these uh, suggestions. But um, I forget what, what year it started, but um, several years ago, Google started to introduce the, like, did you mean feature where it would kind of uh, finish your sentence and give you some suggestions. And so now there's tools out there that you can type in just like a root keyword or main keyword, and it'll give you a list of all these um, long tail keywords and variations that people are typing in that are related to that. And so um, I'll show you one of those tools in a minute, but this just, this uh, graph represent or um, illustrates the difference between longer, uh, longer tail keywords and shorter phrases. So on the top left, we've got uh, sh uh, shoes is just a short keyword. Um, Sure, I'm sure it gets a ton of uh, traffic each each uh, month, but it's very untargeted. It's very generic. I don't really know the intent behind that. Uh, I don't know if they're just um, looking for a Wikipedia page on shoes. Uh, they're probably not interested in buying anything, and it's got a ton of competition because it does have a lot of. Um, if you're trying to rank for that, it just it, there's a lot of other bigger brands that have deeper pockets that could. Uh, you know, had the resources to rank for that. And it doesn't really do you a lot of good as if you're an affiliate marketer or you're just kind of starting out because uh, you're going to spend all this effort. It's going to take a lot of money and a lot of time to get there. And um, it's, it's a very vague keyword. So you still have to really educate the person when they get to the site. And um, on, but on the right hand side of this uh, graph, we've got Keywords like red Nike, men's running shoes. While they get, uh, keywords like that get considerably l less uh, traffic, 
there's a ton of different variations of those types of keywords on equal to or if not greater than the left hand side of the, the graph. And the good thing about these keywords is that they have a higher probability of conversion, uh, more buyer intent behind them, and you do have to do less selling because, excuse me, if uh, somebody was typing in red Nike men's running shoes, you know, they probably already have their wallet out there uh, looking clearly for some uh, red Nike men's running shoes. They're probably just looking for the best deal or maybe the website that has their specific size. And so you don't have to do, it's not that difficult um, one to rank for that because it's such a long uh, keyword that, you know, these big brands are probably not optimizing for that specific keyword. And so, you know, it's just got, it's a win-win you know, situation for somebody that's starting out like I was that doesn't have a lot of resources but you have time and so you can actually take the time to create specific content around these keywords which, um, you know, one thing that um, a lot of people uh, I'm sure probably think in regards to SEO is like, well, and the way I explain it is if it's so simple then why isn't everybody doing it? You know, it's just because one, most people on the planet don't know this stuff, and then the people that do, they make excuses or they don't, they don't have the time either, you know? So even if they know what to do, maybe, they're, uh, maybe they do have the time, but they're concentrating on a thousand other keywords, you know? There's so many different keywords out there, so. And just, even just a couple hundred or a couple thousand or whatever can really um, create an income stream for everybody in this room to make you know, 100 to 200 bucks a day or whatever. So this is uh, the a keyword tool. If you want to write it down, it's keywordtool.io. It's a fr free tool. It's got a paid version, but um, there's a couple of them out there. I just use this one because it's easy to say. But um, if you, yeah, just go to keywordtool.io and that'll pull this up. And I always like to start with a root keyword. Um, and it'll give me a couple of examples, uh, lots of suggestions based on that keyword. So um, if it's a product name, ho hopefully it's a, a popular one and uh, popular enough to at least have some people searching for it for a while. Or if you are, uh, I'll show you my, my process for um, collecting a lot of keywords in just a minute. But um, let's just use, uh, maybe kind of small, but um, ClickFunnels is, uh, some of you in the room may be familiar with it, some of you may not. It's just a online sales page builder uh, tool. But using that as an example, uh, again, it's the name of the product. So I just type in ClickFunnels. It's going to give me a long list of keyword suggestions. And basically, you would just use these as your um, direction for creating your content. So again, kind of going back several years ago, this, this was kind of the hardest part because um, it wasn't that you didn't have the time. It wasn't that you didn't, maybe you, you were serious about creating content. You just didn't know what to write about. And so you're kind of guessing about some of these things. But ever since, you know, tools like this exist, it at least gives you a starting point. And so if you're an expert in um, this product, um, then you can go ahead and write about it. Or if you're not, at least it gives you a direction of, you know, questions to ask um, and get answers for. So that's what I did when I started promoting ClickFunnels. Um, and since then, since it's been around for a couple years now, they have a lot more in keywords. But I would basically, you know, even when I still had a job, I would just pull a list. I had maybe like three or 600. And I didn't have a lot of time at the, at the end of every day. So I just committed to creating, uh, at that time, YouTube videos just short ones because again I didn't have that much time at the end of the day and I would come home and create about five a day and only did it for about a month and then you know a couple months later that got me to that translated into a couple thousand bucks so it you know it, I didn't even complete the list so uh, I'm sure if I did I would be making more money but um, you know I guess the the problem is with, with most people with this, this information is just taking action because um, yes, it took me a long time to learn this information, but it didn't take very, very, me very long to get results with it once I took action and implemented it. 
Um, and that's what I found uh, as well, too. I've got a course that teaches this, so a lot of my students are the, the same way. So um, it usually takes some, uh, the course is a couple hundred bucks, and it usually takes them like 90 days or less to at least make their money back. And the ones that took longer than that, they always say that they got sidetracked or they get distracted for like 60 days or whatever, and then they came back, and then like from that point on, uh, it usually took them about 90 days or less or so. So, but the issue with you know just using, you know just start uh, stopping here is you know where do you go from here? Because if you want to make more money and you're promoting a tool like uh, ClickFunnels, then you know let's say you do um, write content about all these keywords. And let's say you know you wrote blog posts, you turn them into videos, so you got. And maybe you upload them to multiple channels, and you copy the blog post to multiple websites, and now you got like all this content out there. But again, it's all just about click funnels, and there's only so many keywords that people are, are going to be typing in about click funnels. So, uh, and you're, you know, even if, even if you're ranking page one, top of page one for every single one of these keywords, you're kind of capped at the amount of money you can make and the traffic that you can get for these keywords. So, where do you go from there? So this is my process for, it's a really simple process for scaling pretty much any keyword in regards to, you know, research. So uh, I like to start with the, you know, if it's a product I'm creating, I like to start with a, a product name. And then, uh, you know, again, you're going to get hopefully a decent amount of keywords. Uh, if it hasn't been around for very long, then you're, you're not going to get that many, but a little tip or trick there is if whatever you're promoting is very similar to another product that you know you're very familiar with then get a list of those keywords and they're probably in just there's free text tools online to find and replace and just replace the the competitors keywords with your product that's now launching like an example that might be a network marketing company or multi-level marketing company. Uh, there's tons of them that come out every year. And if you search for um, like Mary Kay or Amway or something, probably the same questions and searches that people are typing in to learn about the Mary Kay business opportunity are the exact same keywords that people are going to search for this new business opportunity because they're all the same kinds of people. So uh, that's a way to kind of um, get ahead of the uh, whatever trend and competition uh, before everyone else does because people haven't even searched for those yet. But you already know because it's a pattern and you know, patterns repeat themselves. So, um, so from once you've got your list of or like your root keywords, and again we can go into a lot more examples of these at the end if you want me to use um, an example specific to you or keyword. Uh, specific to what you're doing. Um, but from there, I start to go after my uh, competitor keywords. So, again, some of you may be familiar with ClickFunnels, some people not. I am, so I just kind of knew uh, what their competitors were. And so, some examples are Lead Pages, Kajabi, Get Response. Lead Pages is a um, kind of a drag and drop landing page tool. Kajabi does a lot of things, but it's uh, mostly known for uh, membership site software, and then GetResponse is uh, autoresponder. And so, it, and ClickFunnels has a ton more competitors than this, but this just kind of just uh, show an example. And this is going to give you tons more keywords uh, to write content about or to outsource um, content for. And I I actually think it's a better idea to go after the competitors because. You know, in my opinion, if if people are searching for ClickFunnels or whatever your product name, whatever this new product is, um, especially if they're you know ClickFunnels is like advertising and stuff, and they they have exposure, then um, uh, the it's a better chance, in my opinion, to move people and introduce them to ClickFunnels because a lot of times the people that are searching for those keywords uh, about ClickFunnels, they probably just bought it. Or they may already own it, and so while they're you're you know maybe helping them out, giving them something useful um, on how to use that tool, they may already own it. So um, 
you know, if you go after the competitors, then you can kind of compare and contrast them and say, hey, you know, lead pages is great, but if you're looking to do X, Y, and Z, you might actually want to consider click funnels. And it, you just build this massive funnel and kind of pipeline to, to move them into the product that you're actually trying to promote. And um, like I said, uh, click, click funnels has a ton of different um, competitors. And um, so, yeah, it can, it can go. That's going to take you a while to go through unless you're uh, outsourcing all this content to be created. And then from there, if you manage to get it through like all the competitors, then I would start going more kind of top funnel uh, keywords, generic keywords. So um, these examples here, landing page tool, that's just kind of the generic description of what lead pages is. Kajabi is a membership site software. Just so just like the generic keywords that describe that product or uh, service that are the competitors. Uh, autoresponder is just the generic word for how to describe uh, what Git response is. So you can basically, again, we can run through more examples of this with whatever y'all want me to at the end, but uh, it's just a simple template for me to run you know, when I get started and I pick a product, this is my process for um, um, building out a big list of keywords so I can kind of build out the, the structure of the website I'm building or like the direction of the, the content that I'm going to create. So I want to also show you uh, just a basic um, direction on how to optimize websites and videos without you know, I don't have a lot of time here, but I just wanted to leave y'all with some actionable content. Um, so, as far as optimizing websites, um, we've got a couple of um, elements here. We've got the title, URL, description of the page, and the body. So, on the uh, right-hand side there, I've got um, the titles. These are just um, what you would see in uh, Google or other search engines. Uh, URL and the uh, description and the body, which I don't have, don't have it uh, shown. So this is what I do. Uh, it's not right or wrong, I guess, but it's just a, a, a direction to go if you want um, a, a direction rather than me just like giving you this information and say good luck. Um, this, is, this is how I um, approach my websites and the things that I optimize. So. For the URL, I just usually use the the keyword I'm going after in the the URL itself. So it'd be like your website forward slash um, click funnels hyphen review or something. So it's like if I'm going after that keyword, I just use the exact keyword in the URL. For the title, um, include the keyword, but you know just write it, make it, try to make it engaging. Um, write for a human. Uh, try to make it. Uh, something that would get you curious to click that. And if you're not a copywriter, which you know I don't claim to be a copywriter either, there's a lot of free headline writing tools out there where you can just plug in a couple of your keywords and it'll spit out all these you know high converting titles and things like that. Or you can just um, you know Google those keywords that you're trying to rank for and um, if um, just kind of model some of the other, um, pages that are on page one, if any of them are good. So you can just uh, yeah, model and mimic the competition. And then for the description, I just see that as an opportunity to increase the click-through rate. Um, so your first opportunity and main opportunity is probably the, the title of the website. But for the description, you just have an opportunity to customize um, that the third error there, which is the description that people will see um, when they or uh, see the results in the search engines. Uh, no, some people don't always read those, but you know, if you're typing, uh, looking for something, and you're really interested in that topic, you're, you'll probably read that. And uh, if you don't, um, I'm not going to go into like how to customize that. But if you know, whether you're doing WordPress or if you got a some kind of web page builder tool, uh, the places for where to find these are pretty uh, easy uh, to find. And but yeah, it's not going to like. I don't think, whatever, make or break you as far as ranking and stuff, but it's just another opportunity to, to optimize that and maybe um, include some variations of that keyword just to kind of, again, just a lot of times Google 
the more the more content that you have on the page, the more uh, you know content you're given the search engines to work with. So a lot of times it will if you do a really long article that's really extensive about all the different uh, things about this product, then a lot of times it will rank one page for like 50 keywords over time um, as more people start to find it and click it. Um, you know, you can, out, you can outrank a lot of these bigger sites uh, and bigger brands and stuff just by having better content because Google is really looking out for their users and the other search engines. The people, you know, they, they put a lot of weight on um, what, what results people are actually clicking and how long they stay on those sites and stuff. So there's, you know, yeah, so it's kind of hard to fake really good content because if somebody wants to read that, they're going to stay on that. And, you know, I don't care if it's 20,000 words or whatever, they're going to read the whole page because they're really interested in that topic. So, and as far as the body, I don't really, I don't really put a lot of faith and trust in like these, a lot of these tools out there for measuring things like keyword density. Um, I, I have a really simplified kind of uh, approach and process for SEO just because these are some of the things that have stressed me out. I don't know if you guys have tried SEO or you've um, paid for it in the past or whatever. It just, these are one of the things that um, was really stressful to me before I had my aha moment um, and just trying to optimize for all these different things that I didn't really understand. And so for the body, I don't, I don't really stress out about trying to include my keyword that I'm trying to rank for five times per 300 words or whatever like that. I just write for humans because that's who's going to read it and sometimes I may write, you know, 2,000 words without ever including the, the keyword that I'm trying to rank for, but I am doing a really good job of answering the question that that person came to the page for. So those are just some simple tips for optimizing the, the website. And then for those of you that are interested in going the video route, um, these are just a couple of basic things you can um, just make a little checklist to optimize for your videos, mainly like YouTube videos, but um, there are other platforms out there. But I um, believe that Google gives a lot more weight to YouTube because Google owns YouTube and uh, Google loves Google. So um, I th <laughs> they're going to give more favor to their own properties. So for the first place you can optimize is your including your target keyword in the file name, something that a lot of people don't think about, but it's really simple. So, you know, if it's um, something like uh, whatever, best click funnels review or something, I would just write best underscore click funnels underscore review um, in your file name. The title, much like the title of the website, I would just include the keyword. Try, ideally I'd try to include the keyword I'm targeting as close to the front uh, as possible. It seems like it gives a little more w weight or, uh, to it if it's included closer to the beginning of the sentence or the title. Um, and then, yeah, just make it engaging. Make it something that somebody that's searching for that uh, piece of information would want to click. And, uh, you know, for some examples, you know, not everybody is a copywriter or starts out um, good at writing titles and stuff. I'm, again, not the greatest at it, but um, just pay attention to what other people are doing and um, some of the videos that you've clicked in the past and um, analyze why, why, why did you click that? You know, what made you click that? And maybe just start building out your own uh, templates so that you don't have to think, you know, don't have to think so much when you're creating these in the future. And uh, as far as the description, I um, always include the link or the call to action in the first couple lines. I think it's um, like three lines before you have to click show more or something, but I always try to put my URL or the website I'm trying to promote in the first line. And then I would like to treat the description of um, the YouTube videos like a blog post. Uh, I, think, I think over the years, Google or YouTube has increased the character limit of the 
descriptions. I don't really know the exact number, but it's definitely longer than it used to be, I believe. And so just, you know, a lot of this SEO, when I, when I first got started, it was more about, uh, I was looking for like the secret, you know, the secret to making money and this, you know, uh, super secret special hack to, you know, gain the search engines and stuff. And it really just comes down to, uh, you know, the content on the page. And so while you may have a great video, unless you're a, um, you know, influencer like Gary Vee or something and have one of these uh, authority YouTube channels that you just, um, either you've built up over time or you have a, a celebrity, um, you're a celebrity and you just have like a million followers from day one, you're, uh, uh, there's an opportunity to outrank those people and um, because most of them, I don't think they put a lot of time into optimizing things like their description. They're just, you know, they're on pa top of page one because they have so many uh, subscribers and they have so many views on this one video and whatnot, but it's not like their pages are usually optimi um, optimized as best they could or, th or their videos to, to rank for these keywords. So again, just if you take the time to, just a little more time to treat these videos kind of like a blog post and really leverage all of the uh, opportunities that Google and YouTube and stuff gives you to, to optimize this content, then uh, you're just gonna have a much better chance of ranking because you give it more content uh, to, yeah, to, to work with. And as far as the tags, um, I, again, I'm not super, I don't put a lot of thought into this. Uh, I just go with the keyword I'm targeting and then just uh, like three to five related keywords, but there's tools out there like TubeBuddy.com that can help you, you know, completely optimize your videos and YouTube channel and stuff if you really want to go crazy into um, you know, building an authority YouTube channel and making sure it's uh, completely optimized and um, keeping track of all your rankings for all these uh, specific keywords you're going after. And then the last uh, element is thumbnails. So again, you don't have to be a designer. You can borrow uh, ideas from other channels and then there's free tools like canva.com for making custom thumbnails. So really it just comes down to finding a product or service to promote, uh, at least with what I do. Um, and, and then creating targeted content based on your keywords and that basically, you know, if you do those two steps right, um, that basically translates into dollars. So in conclusion, content equals traffic with you know, search engines and then traffic equals money. So that's all I got. Any questions? How are, you, how are you dealing with, like, do you, have you worked in international markets at all? Like, I know, like, you know, most people do go through Google and all that, but I, certainly there are linguistic challenges and things when you're trying to go, you know, if you're trying to rank for a different... Yeah, uh, I haven't. It's just something I haven't got around to, but I've, I'm very eager to because um, I've just heard it for years since... I don't know if there's, not, I don't know if this is me making something up, but I just don't feel like there's, I've heard that there's a lot less competition over there. And uh, <laughs> can you confirm that? Yeah, and it's, uh, from what I've heard over the years, it's been that way for years. And initially, you know, since I'm unilingual and only speak one language, uh, I was intimidated by that because I was like, oh, I don't, you know, I'm cheap. I don't, I don't have any money at the time. I don't want to use, these translation services, but now, like, there's so many free translation tools. I don't know how good they are because I don't speak these languages, but you could easily just plug in a list of English keywords um, and, and get them right in English and then, like, plug them into, like, I think it's, like, freetranslation.com or even Google Translate. And, yes, it may be, like, broken French or whatever, but I, I think it's so non-competitive that I, I think you'll still do well with like crappy French or crappy Spanish or something. Um, I just something I haven't gotten around to doing, but um, I know a lot of health offers, they have like diet and weight loss offers and stuff in uh, German and French and Spanish and stuff, and it's something I've been wanting to try for a while. I just um, 
haven't, but yeah, I think that's a big opportunity. Yep. Uh, do you have, do you have any ideas? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if you can see that. This is a keyword tool I use. It just seems to give the more, me more search results or, um, but for free. So, um, let's see, mattresses. So. How many people in the room are familiar with these inflatable mattresses? You order them and then you, they're all squished up and then you undo them and they expand and stuff. There's like 500 of them or something now. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Dream Cloud, Nectar, uh, Casper. I don't know if Casper's one of them or not, but yeah, maybe. Um, so let's, I guess, does that work? Yeah. Okay. Let's try like Casper mattress. So like if I was going after Casper, I'd maybe start there and it'd give me this list. And so I just see this as like the low hanging fruit. These are, you know, Ca and Casper it helps that it's been around for a couple of years. They do a lot of branding and stuff. They've even got like physical stores I've seen in the domain. And so these are, uh, now you may not be able to write about all these. Some of these are gonna be weird keywords, but um, it just gives you a starting point of, you know, you could probably pick uh, half this list or whatever just uh, a lot, especially all the verses and stuff. These are all the other um, brands. So this is kind of how I get, uh, you know, get idea, other ideas on other brands and stuff because if you just have a starting point like, you know, Casper and I wasn't familiar with Lisa or Avocado or uh, Amerisleep, then all of a sudden I've got some other angles and direction and stuff. And now I know that uh, uh, Lisa is a brand and Nectar and stuff. So. I might come back up, let's pick another one, like ghost bed or whatever. So like Casper, the reason I typed in mattress is because Casper is also the friendly ghost. So there's a lot of uh, uh, other, yeah, you know, you would get a lot of w weird stuff for Ca just Casper. Um, but with, what was the one? Um, I don't know, a mare sleep or something, uh, or ghost bed. So ghost bed, I could type ghost bed, but there's probably not another ghost bed, any, anything out there in another niche. So that gives me some ghost bed options. And all these, I just know they have affiliate programs and they, they pay pretty similar. So you know you could build a whole website or a whole YouTube channel on these uh, specifically. And honestly, like at least in my experience, the, um, you know, e creating content around each one of these um, uh, brands just because is enough to have a full-time income or create a full-time income for yourself. Because I've done it, and Tyler's done it, and a couple other people have done specifically mattresses. Um, and it has a lot to do with it pays like 100 or more per sale, so you only need to make one sale a day, and that's like 3,000 bucks a month. And uh, yeah, so, and then from here, I would just, kind of use my process. I'd start at the, uh, you know, Casper, and then start, uh, go to the competitors, which are a lot of other mattresses. Um, and then I would go to, I don't even know if I'd, I'd personally waste my time initially going after the generic kind of keywords, but how I uh, substituted that last step for mattresses is since this seems, since these particular kinds of beds, like the, these little inflatable ones seems to be, a, kind of a, a big trend now to expand from there instead of going to generic keywords I went to the older the more traditional mattress brands so like Serta's and all the ones you would buy I guess at whatever mattress whatever it's called um, whatever physical mattress stores uh, Jameson and Serta and Sealy and all those stuff so uh, got, and then try to convince them to buy a ghost bed or something uh, yeah <laughs> It's called, uh, it's keywords.moneyrobot.com.
Dot-com. <laughs> I don't use this in presentations because it's just a mouthful to say, but it's, um, yeah, keywords.moneyrobot.com forward slash advanced. So, money. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, Yes. I, you know, I went through kind of an evolution with video, so I, you know, this is my first public speaking and, yeah, um, event, and I was, so I was I'm pretty introverted, I was really nervous and stuff, so I started out pretty much behind the camera, and I would just do picture in picture, so it'd be my voice, I'd be like clicking around so you could see the screen, and I'd do reviews that way, and then I got comfortable enough with just hearing my voice that I would put, um, or yeah, it was just screen recording, and then I'd do picture in picture so they'd have a face because, and I found that those converted a lot higher. I guess people uh, connect and have, you build some rapport when they can see another human's face or whatever, so those seem to do better. Um, and I, I rarely do just me on the screen. I just, that's not my style. I have friends that uh, teach, have online courses that teach that way, and it works great. It's very engaging, but like I, I don't know, I've had a hard time staring at this little dot here. Um, so I have to like look at something and read it as I'm going about. I don't know. Does that, can I answer your question a little bit? Or I don't know. What's the name of your course? Uh, I don't know if I can pitch or, I don't know. <laughs> It's uh, called SEO Affiliate Domination. The acronym. <laughs> yeah. SEO Affiliate Domination dot com. Um, so yeah, yeah. So I I make <laughs> you know most of my money doing what I teach, but I just I mostly created this as a uh, kind of directory for myself because. You know, if you stop doing this for even a couple of weeks, then you forget a lot of the stuff. So I just wanted to create it as a resource for myself. And, you know, when you start, I don't do it very often, but when you share screenshots and things that you're doing and people, <laughs> friends and family members seeing you successful, they always ask you, well, what are you doing? And can you teach me? And you're like, I, yes, I can, but like, I don't want to. I don't, I don't want to spend like a whole afternoon and I know you're not serious, and it's a waste of my day. So I, I put it together for those kinds of people, too, that I could just say, here's the login. Whenever you have time, check it out, maybe, whatever. Um. Do you really know uh, link building part of your stuff, or is this all just a... I don't concentrate on it, because I, to me, I think it adds another layer of complexity. Um, so I, uh, my, I guess my target for this course is for people that are really just looking to make a 100, 200 bucks a day passively, but kind of do it while they still have a job. Uh, and you could spend, uh, you know, a, a fortune on backlinks, either building your own or buying them. And I just, since, and it helps that I teach long tail keywords because they're a lot less competitive. So long, a lot of times, y honestly, you can just rank with doing your own page well, and you don't really need that many backlinks in my experience. So um, there's just a lot of other, that's another thing that stressed me out over the years. I was like, oh man, like, and there weren't that many courses. And so, and the ones that I did t take, they were expensive. And yes, since then I've figured out more affordable ways, but it's like, man, this is really expensive. It's complicated. Um, and then you're always, it. I don't have like a, a perfect formula and, uh, um, to for like, well, it's going to take precisely like 10 links of this strength to rank for this keyword. It's always been kind of like point some links and then wait and then point some more links and then wait and then eventually uh, you'll get there, I guess. Um, so like for that, uh, whatever, the sexiest man in Austin thing, I, d I wasn't in any rush. I knew I could rank for it, but it took about, what, 70 days or something, and what, like 10 to 20 links or something. Um, but it, like, month, 
Month one, it started to get like indexed and show up. Month two, it was on page one, and then like month three, it was number one. So I'm sure I could have got there faster if I cared a little bit more. I was like more aggressive, but I I just cared about getting there, but I wasn't in any rush. So that that's another reason why I don't do client and stuff because I just I'm like here the price is five thousand dollars, and I'll get you there maybe sometime. <laughs> it, like it, I. <laughs> not not in this course because this is something I just did recently. Uh, I did record a case study recently for it, but um, I just kind of vaguely go over it because again, I don't, I I didn't I documented, but it it was kind of like a very sloppy, lazy approach to it. So again, didn't I just wanted it to happen at some point, but yes. What I, my um, approach to this is I just, I just go back to, you know, in, as far as the content, I write for humans, and then I don't try to put too much thought um, into, you know, having one link or 17 links or whatever. If I'm writing about content that, where I reference other things, then I just, naturally linked to those things and I have kind of a, a mixture of like I do affiliate marketing so the goal of most of the content that I create is to promote other people's products so I'll do one or a couple links to that affiliate product that I'm promoting I'll do a couple of what I call authority links which are just sites to other um, authority sites that are relevant to that post or content and Oh, for per page, yeah. Uh, but again, it's just all uh, based on you know the length of the article, I guess, and the the things I'm mentioning. And then the other thing I wanted to say is, uh, as you start to uh, create more content uh, on your site, then I would try to also link where it's relevant to other pages on the site. So those are the three things I do. But I pages within the site. Within the site. So yeah. Oh, okay. Again, that's something you can come back and do because when you first start, you may only have like a couple of articles. So maybe as you build that out and it um, makes sense to link this page to something that you're talking about over here, then you can come back and do that. So I don't again, uh, worry too much about that in the beginning. You can always come back. And yeah. Yeah, I don't like try to overdo it like Wikipedia, like everything, every word is almost linked to another page. <laughs> Yeah. Where, where do you guys fit with that? Uh, well, uh, I just, I don't know, I have different goals uh, than Wikipedia. They're, I guess. But everywhere you look, they're number two, number three, everywhere. True, true. I just don't think it's, uh, like I said, it's, I, you could do that if you wanted to. Um, I'm not looking to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just asking the question. I don't know, try it. Um, I, I, it just doesn't fit into what I'm doing. I, I think it's not, again, this, to me, Wikipedia, it's not the most entertaining page, but their whole goal, uh, I guess, is to kind of keep you all on this site, and again, like the links that you're clicking link to a page exactly about that, which is, again, if you want to go through the effort of doing that, you could try it, maybe, maybe. Well, they're sending you off the site a lot. Yeah, in the, in the, uh, the links at the bottom and stuff. Yeah. I would say the difference is Wikipedia isn't trying to sell you anything. We are. <laughs> <laughs> you could try it. I mean, that may be something that works and works well. It's just, you know, for most sites, it would look a little, I don't know, you'd probably be fine. It just looks a little weird if, like, every single sentence. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, it's, it's, it's weird, but, uh, you know, it's works for Wikipedia and what they're doing. So. I have a question about, so I work with a fine artist that does contemporary abstract art. <coughs> so my question is about tagging the images, like you've got your Chuck McMahon yeah. images all yeah. tagged up there. And so, you know, usually with a name artist, obviously, you know, the name can be on the image and that will just show up. But if people are just searching for a kind of art, 
does that mean essentially like each image of the art should be named whatever that keyword is that people like you're better off essentially renaming everything contemporary abstract art one contemporary abstract art two as opposed to like the name of the piece or the name of the artist if those things are lesser known mm, i think you'd be fine just naming you know the artist name and uh the name of the piece I haven't really dove deep into this, but w it's a, this was my first time to do anything with images. But there are some, I don't have it off the, t uh, know it off the top of my head, but there's some softwares out there that allow you to embed more information in an image, uh, like meta information and stuff. So, like, whole paragraphs and tags and keywords and stuff. So, like, you can, and Google can see that, but, like, you know, the, average person can't and so you can embed all this extra information so that was it's what it's kind of like gaming the, the system or whatever but like those tools exist so I would definitely use those for images because again there I don't I don't really see when I look at images there's too many people there really doing anything much more than naming the image, whatever, to optimize for the images. So I think that's something you could get away with for like a really, really long time. And I don't know if it'd be considered getting away with it because you're really, you're giving Google more information, which is um, kind of what they're, they want They because you're helping them um, organize this information better. So uh, I don't know. Uh, I just I named them what I was trying to rank for. So I this is the example that I pulled up, but because um, it was the only one I checked. But I I think I rank for all the like variations of this. So like best looking guy in Austin, best whatever, hottest guy in Austin, like all the different variations. Those images had those names. Those were, that's what they were naming. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I did. So. And then I tried, I pointed link, like I pointed, I think, 10 links to this first one that was the sexiest guy in Austin, and the next one, the next one, sexiest man in Austin. So the links I was pointing, the anchor text was, or the clickable link was uh, sexiest man in Austin, because I was trying to rank that third one for that phrase, and that's how I did it. But yeah, I would look into some of those meta. Yeah tools and stuff. I, I have one. I just bought it the other day, but I haven't used it yet, so I don't remember the name. And with, like, YouTube videos, is it better, like, if you've already got views on it, is it, but it hasn't been file named properly, is it, are you better off just pulling it down, renaming the file, uploading it again with a, with a better name, or? I, I think you're fine. I think you're fine. <laughs> I, I, don't, I just think that's something, that, I mean, if you haven't already done it, um, you can start with that, but um, I don't know. How significant Yeah. That's I would just probably optimize what you've got. If you've already got some engagement and stuff, I would just try to optimize the things on the page that you can. Yeah, without having to take it down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anybody else? Yes. I, I, yeah, I promote a lot of different stuff, but I, I, my advice is to just pick one thing to start with. Um, ideally, in more of an evergreen niche, like mattresses would be a good example. Yes, the mattress brands may change, but it, you know people are still going to use mattresses in a year and five years and ten years and stuff. So they, and, you know, they'll probably be searching for those. I, I try to since SEO. It's gonna take a little bit of time, at least in the beginning. I try to pick niches that are going to be around for a while, so that and ideally <laughs> try to p set these sites up and the content that I create in as kind of generic way as possible, a little bit, so that if I ever have to swap out offers, it won't look so weird, maybe. 
that like, I don't know, maybe next year Ghostbed goes bankrupt. Oops, I got all this content I created. Well, well you know, there's w one thing I definitely do, and again, unfortunately I don't have that much time. I can't teach every little thing, but um, I mask and like cloak my URLs, which just means like you take your long, ugly looking affiliate link and you uh, name it something else like your website.com forward slash mattress or something. That way, if the affiliate program goes down and they kick you out or something like that, um, you can switch that link later so it's more dynamic. So you don't have all these pieces of content that are sprinkled out throughout the internet. You don't even remember what the YouTube login was or whatever. And you're like, oh, I gotta change all these links and I don't, I'm not gonna go to three, a thousand videos and this is stupid. So, uh, you know, masking your link like that, you can change the, update the link in the future really quick because, um, you know, all kinds of things can happen. <laughs> um, I, you know, I originally got into videos because, uh, mainly because I, I, again, it was uh, SEO for websites. It was so overwhelming. There was all this misinformation, and I was overthinking things like backlink building. I was like, I don't really know how to rank for this stuff. So, like, YouTube seemed, it had a lot less moving parts because there was only a handful of things you, that I knew that you could optimize, which is, like, the title, the description. There's not a lot to work with there. And so I started out with YouTube videos. Uh, but I like websites more because you have more control. So once you get them to the site, you can control basically the whole experience. Whereas YouTube, you don't have a lot to work with. Other, I mean, you can hope that they watch this the whole thing, but you've basically, as far as a call to action, um, unless you've got like an authority channel, I think now, where you can use custom links on the videos, you've got one little link down there that you're hoping they'll click. And with a website, you can you can control the back button. You've got banners. You've got links. You can cookie stuff them and do all kinds of fun stuff uh, once you get them there, uh, which you can do with this. But you know you can get people to your YouTube video, but then they've got all these distractions in the sidebar. They got all these uh, cool thumbnails that are you know they click and now they're not on your video anymore. And so uh, I prefer websites. But um, videos are great. They're a great way to start and definitely something good to add to your uh, like tool belt because they're super engaging. Everything's continuing to move to mobile and video. So. One last thing. Do you, do you find that EMDs are still a working thing? Yeah, they definitely still work. I know that's, again, one of these like SEO lies. Um, and uh, an example of that is I've got another friend in the SEO space. His name's Gregory Ortiz. And this was a couple of years ago, but it's you know still pretty recent. And I at uh, Funnel Hacking Live, which is ClickFunnels event in 2017, um, I spoke with him, and he I noticed in 2016 at the end of the year he had posted the screenshot of ClickBank, and it was like 100, and, uh, it was like 56,000 or something that he'd earned. And so I met up with him at this event, and he pulled up his. Um, account live and he had made like $176,000 that year with just promoting ClickBank products at uh, like at the end of the year or a couple of months, it wasn't even the whole year. And I was like, man, how'd you do that? Like, uh, that's really impressive with ClickBank products. Um, he was like, oh, you know exactly how to do everything I'm doing. He's like, I'm just using uh, exact match domains, which for anybody that doesn't know what that is, it's just like the product name dot com, productname.net.org, um, and he was like, yeah, a lot of these product names on ClickBank, <coughs> they, they have the .com, but the .net and .org is usually still available, so he would just buy that for 10 bucks, um, throw up a, like a, just a placeholder uh, text, uh, just to see if it would get indexed and ranked, and if he did, it would come back and then update it with like a legit piece of content for, you know, and he said he had the whole process uh, outsource, so he wasn't even doing it. It would take his VA like 15 minutes to set these new sites, and uh, if they got any traffic or got indexed, she would come back and update the page and maybe add like three other articles. And he said, There's, uh, of course, there's a lot of, a lot more losers than there were winners, but the winners paid for all the losers. So.
Yeah, they work. Yeah, that's kind of one of my strategies that uh, that I um, teach, and it's just some. It's a really simple strategy. It's I've kind of had to tweak it over the years, but it worked really well for um, just be doing it kind of in a sloppy way for a while, and then that in combination with what I, it's called tag stuffing. So whenever you create a post in WordPress, there's tags that you can add to posts, and I found that on a side of mine uh, that was already getting some traffic, I, I, this wasn't an original idea. I'd gone through some other training that was a, a mass page builder, and he was talking about how he would include a couple of tags, which are just um, other keywords related to that article. Um, and that, again, you, like of that list, that list that I was pulling up that had like 300 keywords, some of those, they're just, those are keywords that people are typing in, but there's some weird ones that you're like, ah, I can't even write a sentence on this. This is just a weird keyword. I don't even know if I could create content around this. Those are some of the ones that I would uh, tag stuff and just, uh, instead of just adding like 10, I'd add like 1,000 because it started working. And those are the, uh, for each tag you have, WordPress, unless you have it disabled, it'll create like um, indexed pages for each of these tags. And a lot of the tags were the pages that were getting the traffic. So I was like, bing, like light bulb moment. Like, stop creating so many posts. I'll create one post, and I'll put a 1,000 tags in it. <laughs> that way it's not duplicate content. And um, it worked really, really well. And it still works well. I just don't do it in the same way. Like, I might do um, 10 or 20 tags to a post instead of 10,000. <laughs> but I mean, it still works. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, well, the tags are just the keywords. So that keyword tool I'm using, I just insert those and. As tags, so like I don't know if you've ever, ever been. On mm. No, yeah, they're just tags to kind of. To me. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's you know there's websites that you can buy the you know, backlinks for fifteen bucks for ten thousand and like I don't even know where they come from. They're probably built by some software and like. You know, yeah, if other people are buying those same links, they're probably really poor quality, and I, it's just not a wise thing to do. Make sure they're legitimate-ish. Yeah, and honestly, you really don't need a ton of backlinks, mostly for ranking for most of the stuff, uh, for keywords just to get some traction and, and traffic and, and, you know, to turn into money and stuff. It's just when you start to want to rank for keywords that other people are, <coughs> you know, trying to uh, fight over and stuff. But there's there's so much low-hanging fruit if you just went after the long-tail keywords that, like, nobody else cares. Like, I, an example of this is, like, with ClickFunnels, I've, that, when I created that content for those videos, that was, like, four, three, four years ago or something. And you can still find those videos because, and I teach this, and a lot of people come to me specifically because they, they, they're not interested in SEO. They're not even really interested in affiliate marketing. They want to make ClickFunnels commissions. And so they come to me because of that specifically. Um, and so I, I've been teaching this stuff for a couple of years now. And there's a couple of people that have applied it. And then they've gotten results as well. But after all these years and all the 
you know, my, for my courses, you can find it for free on these black hat sites now. So I'm sure a bunch of people have downloaded it, but very few people have actually done anything with it. So like it, there's a lot of opportunity out there. Like if, yeah, if, if, if I can still do it after all these years for the same thing that was working for me, like the same exact product like four years ago, uh, yeah, there's plenty of opportunity. Well, yeah, the one I gave you. Do I? Oh, oh, yeah. SEO affiliate domination dot com. So, yeah, it's a mouthful, but <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. might be in his space if it yeah. has any. Yeah. But if they're already so if they're really popular yeah. and you know there's collectors out there and they're getting the prices that he wants, yeah. then you could might could rank for their names and like include like um, a small little blog that you own that's like it's all about art and it's like top ten abstract artists and you put your guy's name next to the other nine. Yeah. And it's like, well, who's this guy? And then they find you and like sort of like So you're kind of creating these sort of like sideways reference points. Yeah. It really comes down to you gotta find out like what are people searching for that's similar. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. How do and they so find these other artists? Exactly. Yeah. Outside yeah. of your guys and nobody and nobody's looking for them. So what are they looking for? You already right. said it's yeah. abstract yeah. art, yeah. whatever. So I think the competitor yeah. thing is a perfect yeah. example. Yeah. 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 Stuff the shit out of the competitor yeah. names. Yeah. Put it in yeah. images. Yeah. Put it in blogs. Well, and a lot of the art and like the art world is the music world is. I come from a music background, yeah. so like the music world is just catching up. Like I was studying David Frey out of Houston like a decade ago, and I remember saying. This is great stuff, all internet marketing, blah, blah, blah. I said, how do you, do, uh, how do you sell music with this? He's like, well, you don't. Because nobody, nobody, nobody is, you can't convince somebody, because it's all copy based. You can't convince somebody that they need art, right? Okay. It's like, and where you so can't say, I just want to introduce myself. I was the one asking all the questions. That was the niche. I wonder if you know, I have this app. Is that what it was like? Did you eat your brain? No. Really? It's just so close. I, my feet, my legs cramp if I drink that thing. It might be these shoes are too tight. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I might find you on LinkedIn or something. It's in Geneva. Uh, that's that's that. I run a mining you company here, and I just I wanted to chat with you about a couple of your best investments and stuff like that. Yeah. I do. Look me up on there, because I don't even think that's what you need. That's the best part of your life. I just didn't know what, I did. I forgot what it was. That's fine, man. But anyway, I'm Paul, and I'll be in touch. Thank you so much. I was going to help. No, it was. 
Yeah. It's just like, you know, well, I'll, uh, yeah. it's, there's just yeah. lots of detail. Yeah, I, what I like about this, I know, what I like about what I, my approach to it, though, is that, you know, unlike a lot of other speakers that have been to see it, they may be really accomplished, but whatever their teaching, I don't know how to apply it to what I'm doing. Yeah. At least with SEO, like I care if he's doing e-com, affiliate marketing, you're a local doctor, you're doing clients, like whether you so want to do the same it, rules would apply to the same structure. structure. And so I'm a marketing cover uh, uh, And before, uh, we, we don't do uh, online, uh, we do uh, offline uh, products. So but before all this digital world changed in the last two or three years, especially, we didn't have to really market because people found us and used to talk about the conversion rate. So we've actually had to learn how to do our own SEO for ourselves to find a way to get ourselves in front of the right big people, and it's, it's everything not I anything I've yeah, accomplished yet. That's why I came tonight, so I want to learn more. Awesome. Yeah. Anyway, I okay. appreciate your time. Okay. It's actually like some of the Oh, yeah. That much I'll send you a note. Yeah. You can make yeah. it all. Great job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Um, I do want to say that you can it, so yeah, you can get results really fast. You're getting your test results. Thanks, man. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. What's your name? Matt. Matt. First time. It's okay. John. Yeah. Once you get to 50. <laughs> but good luck with that, man. That's a tough industry. What do you do? Yeah, it's exciting. What do you do? I run a small business. That's it. Do you do this? 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 Do you it's all in house. Did you? Uh, are you from yeah, yeah. No, so I just moved down here to put a new office down here. The agency is based in Dallas. Okay. Cool. What was your name? Brent. Brent. Okay. Uh, it's called Pixel Cut Lots. Did you go to any kind of school for that? Or did no, you know? I started the company. Oh, yeah. It seems to be like, I know they're starting to have some courses and stuff out there, but now that I've been in this space, I'm like, I would never try well, so, so, funny yeah, thing, so you, read, you read from But right now, it's just like, right? it's just planning. Was that you that read it? Yeah. He was talking about probably yeah. first of all. Yeah. I actually haven't read it yet. He just kind of read it. Read it. Read it. Read it. Yeah. If you bring in money, yeah, yeah it doesn't matter. I haven't done that for There's some influencers that have the global perspective following. Just when everybody mentions, whenever, whenever anybody mentions that book, I say, don't let it sound your thought to repeat it. I mean, I can't, I, I can't stress it enough. Yeah, it's what saved me last year. So, this is how, so this is how, this is the difference between free So he goes into a business. So yeah, so I mean, if I look at, for well, example, linear looking, but, but essentially profitability it's a, for implementing it's a, I was just about to ask you, not, just about to ask you, it's not a portrait of your face, if you were doing it, you're interior. Just what your name is, right? Okay. Last year, I brought this up with negative 7,000, so we implemented it in January. So it's just totally flipping portraiture on its head, right? And so I told him, let's do a series of Went from negative 7 for an entire year to a positive year. Yeah. Yeah. I highly recommend that. All those keywords, yeah. Gerhard Richter, yeah. all these guys yeah. connected to that. So, good job. And then suddenly yeah. now this is all. What do you speak of then? So, Press, you know, yeah. and we're all the so 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 Are we done? Perfect. That's that kind yeah. of Yeah, and you've ever like paid press releases. You know, a lot of people provide. A lot of some that I pay for for lead generation. You just get out of shit, plan it out there, and then that's all. Most of it's not technical deep dives. I've done a lot of technical ones, but they last like a seven. Two or three. Yeah. Have really you guys have heard of not yeah. doing it? No. Um, I'm not going to be able to make it but this year. But he um, has it's in Shanghai. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not going to be able to make it. <laughs> 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 it's an event. Yeah. 100%. Right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. it's a pleasure to meet you, man. I appreciate you. Yeah. Like, yeah. I know a lot of like little SEO masterminds. Uh, and all yeah. Yeah. The more yeah. events you go to, yeah. you'll find like these little vertical uh, masterminds. Uh, like, uh, that's hey, the only reason I came out of my kids today. So that's good. Do you have a card? I do not. Yeah. I don't. I, don't, yeah. I, don't I guess you have to find a license now. I'll give you mine. I'm quite close to SEO, but almost. You guys are going to be It's nice. I just want to see what it is. I just want to see what it is. Oh, yes. Sure, I mean, just go through this course. So, let's cover some of the
I just I have a design background. I went to school to learn how to make all this and stuff, and then yeah, I, job and I, I didn't really go into it, but I've never I've never done too well financially at jobs communicating my skills and work that way. But uh, it was weird because uh, when I finally made the transition, you know, all these years my parents were telling me that my real job was benefits, and now I make more than that. You know, you know, you know, I know how that feels. Um, I drove out of school very recently. I'm waiting for a pass to say, okay. I have a lot of fun. So, and, uh, he, you know, uh, this is a little sphere, but that's where I come in, because he's yeah. really... And I still don't understand what I do, but they're just happy that I'm going to go on. I get referrals from my parents. It's weird. It's crazy. Yeah, old. Yeah, hey, if you're ever around, you've got to do something as well. Yeah, you said you're just moving here? I moved here back in the last year. What part of the town are you? I live in the versus second of the area. We're opening up a new office. I don't really like coming like down here. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't really like coming down here. That's I'm a very next cool because we're next school next school next I would recommend it. It's, it's a good place to like mingle with like some of the floor duties, but like there's a lot of things going on. It's on the covers. With all the Amazon stuff, there's tons of automation, there's tons of software that are built for you. The problem is, with all that kind of stuff, it's pretty spammy. You know? So, uh, that's the thing. In my opinion, the spammy stuff is only going to last for so long. It's not a long term strategy. It's a short term strategy. Because there's software where you just punch in a keyword and it'll auto generate yeah, I love that stuff, YouTube by the way. videos I'm, I'm a for man. Amazon. I've got my bachelor's in psych and theories and personality with like do like car audio and it'll just overnight totally into a thousand videos with, with links to Amazon from YouTube. At the like, time it would be a little small kind of super boy. cool. Right? Help me but are those have some framework be going you know, into like adulthood yeah. of yeah. just yeah. understanding yeah. people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just yeah. theories of personality yeah. and like There's having YouTube some like some system to process look at like how people are and who they are. How long do they watch that helped me a lot. So, so use I'm very very big fan. Like it's nice to that's actually stick. But if you get behind the camera and like Look at this jacket. Huge. This jacket's like, super bad. It's kind of like really nice, in the know, 360 like degrees around it. It's kind of like it's go this way in general. Start the link learning. Like, on like, it points you in a direction. Right. That's going to do really well. Cool. Cool. And how it does a laptop thing. It doesn't define it. It gives you direction to understand it. That's so... The more high, the higher ticket you feel comfortable doing, the better. Yeah. depending on the item. Mm -hmm. But it's top of five hundred five yeah. grand. Yeah. Right. So it's a little bit more fun to feel. I wonder if you have a solution on that. Yeah. Um, Info products like oh, four totally. solutions. Ranking those on this year? Yeah. Yeah. Life coach. You build your own thing. That's a goal. Thousands of thousands of whatever. Eventually you see what happens. Just to get some course. weights off yeah, that are probably just sort of bucks, yeah. hanging there all the time. Yeah. Right. It right. is. I got there you go. Yeah. 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 So you already know. So that's like my first question. Yeah. So you can really focus. Believe um, something. So yeah, there's a lot of money in that. But the higher that you go, you go. Limiting the thoughts and beliefs. If we don't see ourselves as like deserving of like the success of it, you're not. We're going to live out a path that doesn't get to that success. We don't really feel like that's very much And so, you know, I'm aware of all of this. I can't wait to, like, just overhaul, get rid of stuff that needs to just be dug out and then build. I do SEO. You're not going to wait for that. It's way too competitive. But how do I do SEO for plumbers? Right? Maybe there's a course on how to do SEO for plumbers or whatever. You know, whatever you know. But you got to go a little bit more long tail. One day I would love to work with somebody. Right? But, but if you can get more long tail, more specific, 
just too much talking about. Because somebody else could. You can't really perform, perform surgery on the shelf, right? So if you take you the can, time to optimize. You can fix a cut, articles, right? You can, how to do SEO you can even, you know, if you hurt your elbow, that's you can That's probably super competitive. But there's but something the idea. deeper inside. Yeah. You can't yeah. operate on that yourself, right? It's the same thing, I think, with... And I don't know. You got in at the right time. I've been here with 33 years of living. Someday somebody needs to perform surgery. What's the why? I'm sorry. I'm looking forward to the financial situation to just do that. So, still today, I can still probably get up there. Like most people, most people don't do it. Most, yeah, that's what's like most performers, affiliates, they're either those. Their main thing is paid ads. Sometimes I'm like, I just need Especially like Amazon, like that. They just don't pointing out right now in this but look moment. Into it. If you so I can like cast something off and, 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 and step, step a little bit more forward in my like, ultimate so identity or something. So. If you work out deals, I'm, I'm a send you pretty pretty product and say, I'm going to do a review on it, send it back. Eventually, it's give you the product so you can get good enough. And I'm thankful that little, how this future way can be just psychology of why. And then even so, it's just been like, yes. Back and then you me, I, if I had, obviously, if I had all the answers, most right. companies will do well. So obviously, I don't. <laughs> you say, hey, charge so my credit card. I'm, I'm not, not trying to steal a laptop from you. Uh, yeah. Not any of that. Back to you. One hundred percent for a chat. Yeah. Like I said, you can't perform surgery on yourself. Yeah, I need it. Now I do conversion rate optimization. So CRO, what you do in the show is basically, yeah, you get a bunch of traffic to the website. What's your conversion rate? It's usually like 0.5 to 2%. And we're stuck in our, so ultimately our one big total. So the change the copy on your website, you change buttons, yeah. the placement, the color, the size. It's totally. a lot of psychology that goes into it, but what converts somebody from a visitor to a buyer. Yeah. Stuff is 